Hi, in today's video, I'm going to use my ink tense blocks in three different ways. One of the ways I don't think I've ever used it before. So I'm working in my 7x10 Canvas and Mixed Media Art Journal, and my inspiration comes from this Holy Church napkin that I got from Ninny's Napkins. There's a link in the description box below. This is a beautiful napkin. The colors, the watercolor effect are amazing. But I am going to isolate mainly just the church. And then I'm going to create a background inspired by the colors that are in the napkin. So I am going to just simply rough cut this part out. That middle part, it has blues and yellows. I'm going to use that as collage paper on another art journal page. Now I could have used this and just glued it down and made a beautiful card, easy peasy. But, you know, I want to have some fun and create a background, so that's what I'm going to do. So after peeling off the two excess plies, I'm just deciding what elements I want to use on my art journal page. And I'm going to water cut it with my liner brush. Now I just put a little bit of water on the water brush and run it along and eliminate or isolate the images that I want to use. This gives you a deckled edge that more easily blends with the background. You can cut it with scissors if that's your preferred way, but you get a straight edge and sometimes that doesn't, it shows up a little bit more on the page. Now the secret here is using less water. You don't need a lot of water and do little bits at a time as you go. And here you can see I'm isolating the church and some of the trees. The parts that I'm taking off, I'm not throwing those out. They just go into a bin and I will put those onto an art journal page and it'll be one element of the, the background. I'm just gonna use them as collage papers. Now I want to add some texture to my background and I'm going to use this sign, po sign stencil from the Crafters Workshop. It's called Snowy Cabin, but I don't want the cabin. I don't want the trees. I want this swirl and I'm putting modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop through the stencil and I'm going to create texture and movement in my background. So when you have a stencil, Remember, you don't have to use it in its entirety. You can use simply elements of it to maximize its use. Now there's a bit of a gap here because of the way the stencil is, so I'm just gonna overlay the stencil and add some modeling paste. Then I'm gonna make sure that's completely dry before I'm adding another swirl. The Crafters Workshop modeling paste dries fairly quickly, but I did use a heat tool to speed up the process. And you can see the texture that's added. And that's going to come out even more when I add color to my background. Now there's the snow texture on the bottom of this stencil and I'm going to use that. So I'm basically doing the same. I put some on, I dry it, I add more as I see fit. Now once that's completely dry, I'm giving the whole page, including on top of the modeling paste, a coat of gesso. This is to prepare it to take the ink tense block color that I'm going to use. I don't want raw paper. So once that's dry, I'm going to finalize what part of the church of the image I want. And you can see I cut off that tree that was on the left hand side, but he's going to pop back in a few. I'm putting fluid matte medium underneath and on top. just to make it a non-porous surface in case I want to add some color to it later on. Now I want to soften the harsh edge here between where the napkin ends and the page begins. So I'm just taking some white gesso and dabbing it on. So now let's get out those ink tense blocks. There's a link to the ink tense blocks in the Amazon store if you want to go and check them out. Now my favorite color medium 
most use is acrylic paints. But the second would be the ink tense blocks. They are permanent when dry. So what I'm doing there is I'm matching the ink tense blocks, I've got them swatched out, to colors in the napkin. There's that yellow, there's a green, and a couple shades of blue. I'm taking some of that yellow and then I'm activating it with water. Now the ink tense blocks are ink and they are permanent when dry, but they act a lot like watercolor. You get that same watercolor effect and they're very matte. All the reasons that I love using them. So here I want that watercolor look that I got inspired from the napkin. And I can't quite get that with my acrylic paints. I can get close if I'm in a pinch, but I like, I love using my ink tense blocks. Now, when you go to check out the ink tense blocks, you're gonna notice that it looks, they look to be very expensive, but they last. My ink tense blocks I've had for <clears throat> probably about eight years. And there is a lot of usability there. So after putting the color, because this part is the snow, I'm putting some white gesso just to knock back. I don't want it as bright and bold as the sky. So now I'm taking two colors of the blue, the green, and the yellow, and I'm going to make this interesting sky. Now the intense block will catch a little bit more in the texture paste making that texture, that swirl, sh stand out. So I'm just adding the color, and really, it's that easy to use. Now I'm spraying with water, and I have water on my brush, and I'm mixing each color separately, but then keeping it wet, blending it. So when the blue and the yellow meet, of course, they make some more shades of green. and I'm just mixing it up. I want an interesting, colorful, watercolory, dreamy background. As you go, as you can see, I'm grabbing the yellow and adding more yellow to, to it if, it if it isn't as dark. It tends to dry a little lighter, so you might, after drying it, come back and add more color. If you absolutely don't like it, you can take a baby wipe, wipe it off while it's still wet, put a coat of gesso and start from scratch. Here I'm adding more yellow because I wanna brighten those yellow, that yellow spot up a little bit. Then I'm adding some, some of the dark blue. I want to kind of have a line where the horizon is, so I'm marking that in. And I continue just adding some dark, some lights, just tweaking it till I get it to where I want it. And like I said, you can always dry it, add gesso, go back to white. So here, I believe I get an idea to try stenciling with the ink tense block. You've seen me stamp with them. So I'm making it some rather thick, getting some a lot of color, a pigment on the brush, and I'm stenciling, I'm just dabbing it through the stencil to add more of this line work, more of these swirls to my background. So I've got the textured swirl where the ink tense block has gotten caught in it and is showing up. And now I'm adding some in the darkest blue. And I'm loving how this is looking. We'll be doing more stenciling with the ink tense blocks later in the video as well. But I go around and I keep adding it. I'm not sure why I thought to do this today, but I'm sure glad I did it. And I'm, I'm gonna have to play with you stenciling with my ink tense blocks a little bit more.
I'm just getting a lot of that ink on the brush and stamping through. You just want to be careful not to get it too watery. At this moment, I'm absolutely loving the background. It's textured, it's got movement, it's got these soft, dreamy colors, watercolory. So if you ever are in the middle of a page and you think, I wonder what would happen if, go for it, try it out. You might discover something that you love doing or that looks wonderful. And there you get a close-up of it. I think it's just added a lot. I'm loving the look. I'm giving this a good dry. Now, the where the snow is, I want it whiter. So I'm making a wash of white gesso, I'm just thinning the gesso down, and painting over it. I don't want the snow to be pristine white because it's kind of reflected the color of the sky in it but I want to definitely define the snow area to the sky. Decide I wanna add some more pattern to the background, so I grab my French script stamp. This is one of my basics. I could not be without this. I love, the, love it, and I'm going to put white acrylic paint on it with the uh, foam, Ranger's foam, blending foam and just stamping some of that script into the sky, and then I put it in the snow as well. The goal isn't that the script is going to be readable, the goal is that that's just adding another layer of patterning. Yum. And of course, I'll be cleaning my the acrylic a, acrylic paint off of my stamp when I'm done. Now I'm using the ink tense blocks in the third way. I am giving a wash to my focal image. I'm over painting, and I'm just basically bringing out the colors because everything on here is very much the same colors, the background and the focal image. I want the focal image to stand out. So to recap the three ways that I've used the ink tents blocks, I've used them to colorize the background. I've used it to through a stencil, and then I'm overpainting on my focal image. Just giving it a wash of color. And because they're more translucent than acrylic paints, I can add to the color, tweak the color without getting rid of any of the detail that's in the napkin. So I'm just matching, I'm looking at my swatches and I'm matching colors to what's there and I just want it to stand out a little bit better. You want to make sure that, that any napkin area, you've either put a very good coat of the matte medium on it or even better, some clear gesso so that it becomes a non-porous surface and you can overpaint it without it soaking into the napkin. Here I'm adding white gesso to just all the snow areas. And that's just brightening up the focal image as well. Then I'm adding a little bit more white to where the snow area is, the field. I 
I want to edge the page, but instead of doing it with my acrylic paint, I'm just taking that dark ink tense block and activating it. Now here I activate it with water on the brush, and then I thought, oh, I can just do that with my finger. So I wet my finger and I rub it along, and how easy is that? So I guess that's a fourth way. I'm edging or shading around it with the ink tense block, and it's so easy to apply. If you're unsure if you want to try the Intense Blocks, you can in art stores, as well as I've seen in Amazon, buy single colors and give it a try. So buy your favorite colors and then give it a try. So here I decide to stencil on some of the marks in the snow, again with the dark blue. but you know what? I didn't like it, so I wet it out and get rid of it and add some white gesso. That's how easy it is to cover any mistakes that you make. I cut out a sentiment from my Simplicity sentiment pack. All my sentiment packs, they're digital uh, downloads and you can purchase them at Nini's Napkins. The link is in the description box. And I decided I'm going to add a tree. So I water cut the tree out and I'm gluing it down with the fluid matte medium. I like the script of this sentiment. It seems to match the movement, the swirls in the sky. It's a similar feel. Thank you if you are already a subscriber to my channel. If you're not, please take the time to hit the subscribe button. It's right under the video. And then click the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Here I'm using my liner brush and the ink tense pen block. And I'm getting some of that brown and adding, making those branches stand out just a little bit more. And then I'm going to add some snow into the trees with the white gesso as well. And I go back and forth between the brown and adding the white gesso. So I have a winter tree with all its branches and a little bit of snow caught in it. I do have a series of videos where I talk about all the ways that you can use the Inktense blocks in mixed media and art journaling. You may want to go check that out. I apologize in advance. It's one of the first few videos that I've made, so I've learned a few things. But the content, the information, is good. I'm deciding if I'm done and I decide I want to add some stars. So I grab this snowflake stencil. I like the shape of that star and I'm using the dark brown, dark black or dark blue and I'm stenciling again with that star. I like the darkness there. It seems to add a little bit of contrast and it's a starry night. I love painting a night sky or skies. Just texture, pattern, movement, and you'll make a beautiful sky, no matter what colors you choose. And I decide that I want to add 
some yellow stars, but instead of using my intense blocks, I want some shimmer. So I am going to use gold acrylic paint. Remember, it's mixed media. You can use acrylics with intense blocks and they work perfectly well together. So I'm just using, I'm stenciling it the same way. I don't even bother getting my makeup sponge to stencil with. There are close-up pictures of the finished page and that dreamy, dreamy background, which I, oh, I just get lost in it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you learned at least one thing from this video. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment. Until next time. Go get creative.